please. <laughs> State your name, please. Daisy. How old are you? I'm... I'm 17. I wish I'd gotten your case earlier. Why are you wearing a dress? Oh, I'm sorry. Am I? I didn't realize. <laughs> I know I'm a boy, or a young man. It's just, I was so used to wearing dresses for so long that some mornings I wake up and I just forget. <coughs> I should really just clear all the dresses out of my closet. Why did you used to wear dresses? Well, that's how my parents dressed me. They said they didn't know what sex I was. But it had to be one of the two. So they made a guess. <laughs> They just guessed wrong. <laughs> Are your genitals in any way misleading? No. <laughs> I don't believe so. I don't think my parents ever really looked. It was a kind of politeness on their part. They didn't want to intrude. My mother's sort of delicate. And my father rests a lot. <laughs> Did you think they acted out of politeness? Well, probably. It all got straightened out eventually. When I was 11, I came across this medical book that had pictures in it. And I realized I looked more like a boy than a girl. But my mother had always wanted a girl, or a bestseller. And I didn't want to disappoint her. But then some days, I don't know what gets into me, I would just feel like striking out at them. So I'd wait till she was having one for crying fits, and I took the book to her. I was 12 now, and I said, have you ever seen this book? Are you totally insane? Why have you named me Daisy? What's the matter with you? Everyone else has always said I looked like a boy. She kept crying and said something about Judith Prince. <laughs> and something about being out of shake and bake chicken. And then she said, I want to die. And then she said, Perhaps you're a boy, but we don't want to jump to any hasty conclusions. <laughs> so why don't we just wait, and we'd see if I menstruated or not. <laughs> oh my. I asked her what that word meant, and she slapped me and washed my mouth out with soap. <laughs> then she apologized and hugged me and said she was a bad mother. Then she washed her mouth out with soap. <laughs> Then she tied me to the kitchen table and turned on all the gas jets and said, Oh, it'll just be a little while longer for the both of us. <laughs> and when my father came home, he untied me and turned off the gas jets. And then when he asked if dinner was ready, she lay on the kitchen floor and wouldn't move. <laughs> and he said, I guess not. <laughs> and he sort of crouched next to the refrigerator and tried to read a book. But I don't actually think he was reading because he never turned any of the pages. But eventually, since something else started happening, I just went to bed. How did you feel about this? Well, I knew <coughs> something was wrong with them, but then they meant well. And I felt that somewhere in all that, they actually cared for me. After all, he untied me, <laughs> and she washed her mouth that was so too. <laughs> so I forgave them, because they meant well. I tried to understand them. I felt sorry for them. I considered suicide. That's the end of our first session. Now. Why have you waited two years between your first and second sessions, and you never called to cancel them after <coughs> waiting here for two years? I'm sorry. I should have called. 
I was just too depressed to get here. I've, I'm in college now. I've owed this paper on Jonathan Swift and Gulliver's Travels for one and a half years. I keep trying to write it, but I just have this terrible problem beginning. In problems of this sort, it's best to begin at the beginning, follow through to the middle, and continue on until the ending. Oh, well, I've tried that. I don't seem to get very far. I'm still in the first sentence. Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels is a biting bit of work that... I just keep getting stuck on the that. <laughs> I see you're wearing a men's clothing today. Yes, I threw all my dresses away. Now I'm going to change my name from Daisy. I'm considering Francis, <laughs> Hillary, <laughs> or Mary. Any other names? Rocky. <laughs> Have you seen your parents lately? I try not to. They call me and cry and so on, but I hold the receiver away from my ear, and then I go next to the refrigerator and I crouch for several days. <laughs> and how are you doing in school? <laughs> I'm not even sure I'm registered. It's not just the Jonathan Swift paper yet. I have a paper comparing a George Herbert poem with a Shakespeare sonnet. I have a paper on the Canterbury Tales and an essay on American character as seen in Henry James's Daisy Miller. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy. I'm half crazy. <laughs> I'm half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Shalott. You sound like an English major. Yes. I learned a certain love of literature from my parents. My mother is a writer. She is the author to the Cliff Notes of Scruples. <laughs> next to the refrigerator he'd often <coughs> I like reading. I have this eerie dream though. That sometimes I'm a baby in my crib. And somebody's reading aloud to me from what I think is mommy dearest. <laughs> and then this great big dog keeps snarling at me. And then this enormous bus or truck or something falls down from the sky and it kills me. And then I always wake up. That's the end of our second session. Doctor, I'm so depressed I can hardly talk on the phone. <laughs> it's like I can only function two hours a day at maximum. And I have this enormous desire to feel absolutely nothing. That's the end of our third session. <laughs> so obsessive. But it's ridiculous to spend hours and hours seeking sex, just really in order to find those 10 or 20 seconds. I mean, it's so time consuming. No wonder I never did that paper on Gulliver's Travels. Oh, you still haven't done that paper? No. I've been a freshman for five years now. I'm never going to graduate. At registration every fall, people just laugh at me. That's the end of our 53rd session. <laughs> See you Tuesday. I mean, it's the inconsistency I hate them the most for. One minute they're cooing and cuddling and feeding me nightquill, the next they're lying on the floor, or turning on the gas jets and threatening to step on my back. How dare they treat me like that? I didn't ask to be brought into the world. They didn't know how to raise a child. They should have gotten a dog. Or a kid. They're much more independent. <laughs>
or a gerbil, but left me unborn. That's the end of our 215th session. <laughs> Look, I suppose my parents aren't actually evil, and maybe my plan of hiring a <coughs> person to kill them is going too far. <laughs> They're not evil. They're just disturbed. And they mean well, but meaning well is not enough. How's your Philiverse Travels paper coming? I'm too depressed. I'm afraid I'm going to be on vacation next week. I'm not happy with my present name. I'll just be gone a week. And I wore a dress last week. I won't be gone that long. And I slept with 30 people. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't be responsible for what I might do next week. Please, please, I need a vacation. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Take your stupid vacation. I just hope it rains. You're trying to manipulate me. Yes, but I mean well. <laughs> Doctor, I've been in therapy with you for ten years now. I've been a college freshman for six years, and a college sophomore for four years. The national defense loan I have taken to pay for this idiotic education will take me a lifetime to repay. I don't know. I just feel sort of, well, stuck. Yes? Oh, and I had another memory I'd forgotten. Something else my parents did to me? It was during that period of time I was stayed in the laundry pile. Yes? So, my mother had promised me I could have ice cream if I would just stand up for ten minutes and not lie in the laundry. And then when I did stand up for the ten minutes, it turns out she had forgotten she was defrosting the refrigerator. It was so typical of her. I mean, she had a college education. Who could forget they were defrosting the refrigerator? <coughs> Don't you just hate her? How old are you? Twenty-seven. Don't you think it's about time you let all this go? What? Don't you think you should move on with your life? Yes, your parents were impossible, but that's already happened. It's time to move on. Why don't you do your damn Gulliver's Travels paper already? Why don't you decide on a name? My secretary has writer's cramp from changing your records from Rocky to Butch to Kane to Abel to Tootsie to Rain Cloud to Elizabeth I to Elizabeth II, to Ponchita Pierce, to Mary Bangaretti. I mean, we know you've had a rough start, but pull yourself together. You're smart, you have resources, you can't blame them forever. Move on with it!